Welcome back, YouTube. My name is Nigel Schroeder, and today we're here to talk about five things that you should do before you quit your job. So once again, five things that you should do before you quit your job. I want you guys to comment down below if you think that there's anything in particular that should be added to this list or maybe taken off of this list. Um, I am going to talk about certain adjustments to things that may happen depending on your situation and your field of work and how you can adjust these things and continue to accomplish what you want to accomplish. So the first thing, talk to a supervisor. All right. And this is one of the most important things. Talk to your supervisor and tell them the reason why you're thinking about leaving. Um, do not tell them I'm thinking about leaving. What I want you to do is go in there and say, hey, um, Mr. So-and-so or Mrs. So-and-so, um, recently this has occurred and I don't really like this. Is there anything that we can do to rectify this situation? Um, you know, or, Hey, I feel like I'm doing a lot of work and I'm not being compensated. Um, you know, according to how I feel like I'm working, um, is there any way that someone can assist me on these projects to make it easier or assist me with this? or that I can get a raise. It's a good way to get a raise, um, you know, is to say, hey, is there somebody who can help me do this? Or can you give me a raise? Because then they don't feel like you're being so greedy and aggressive. Um, you know, it's more of, I need assistance. And, you know, if not, I do know my value. So it's a it's a nicer way to put it out there. And depending on your relationship with your supervisor is also going to depend on how well you can just walk up to them and say, hey, you know, I need a raise or, you know, I'm uncomfortable with this or that. But try and have that point of contact first. The next thing, get a letter of recommendation from your supervisor if possible. The reason why you want to get that letter of recommendation is because going in the future, if this turns out bad in any given direction you want to always be able to take that letter and give to your next employer so if they say hey you know um can we get a contact from your last employer you know you can always say oh well um, I have this letter of recommendation and from them have it, you know, signed by them and everything and take it to that employer um, because, you know, people cannot change what they write down on paper, but they can change what they say about you in an instant. Um, the next thing, number three, prepare a resume and cover letter. And I cannot not not stress this anymore. Your resume, you want to lay out in your cover letter. And this is your opportunity to be narcissistic. If you're not sure if you're being narcissistic enough, if you're not sure if you're being arrogant enough, if you're not sure that you're boasting all of your talents and qualities, contact someone else and let them read over your resume. You know, give your resume to a family member and say, hey, read over this. How do you... Would you hire me? You know, how do you see this resume? What do you think I should add or take off? And by doing so, you're going to put yourself on that pedestal to get the next job that you want and be treated correctly. You know, I know there's people who go and they try to tweak their resume to the job, and that can be good in certain instances. However, you also have to think about it. Your, your resume and your interview is going to be your opportunity to present yourself as you to your next job and the reason why you're probably planning on leaving your current job is because either you're being mistreated or more than likely you gave a job an impression of something that you were and they gave you an impression of something that they thought you wanted to hear in an interview and you all may have been kind of deceptive 
So if you're not deceptive and you show people straight out, this is me, this is my intelligence level, this is what I've accomplished, um, this is where I'm trying to go, these are my goals, and you lay that stuff out to your new employer, then you don't have to worry about getting, you know, six months down the line in your new career and saying, oh, I want to quit here too because these people, you know, they found out about my education and now that they've found out about my education, you know, they don't want me here. Um, now I'm a, a threat to them. You know, now I'm overqualified. Um, you know, now they're going to start mistreating me. If you can knock all of those things out before you begin by just being honest and being yourself, it goes a long way. In interviews, be yourself, talk like yourself, and people who gravitate towards you and your being are going to hire you. That's not to say don't be professional. There is a certain level of um, of professionalism that is necessary when you go into an interview, um, but be yourself. You know, dress nicely, but dress in what you're going to be wearing to work. Dress, you know, dress to the job, and that way they can see you fitting into that job they can see you there and they can see how you're going to present yourself when you go there I don't say oh I'm going to go change my hair today because I have a job interview no I walk in with my hair like this because this is how I wear my hair the majority of the time now you know I wear a button down shirt to work so I wear that same button down shirt I wear those same pants I got called for a job interview um and when I got called in for the job interview, they said, well, when can we interview you? I said, well, we can interview in the next 30 minutes. I'm already dressed. It'll take me 30 minutes to drive there. And they were like, what? <laughs> I'm already prepared. You know, be prepared at all times. Just a little side note there. Now, the next thing, apply for new jobs. You know, I see so many people that quit their job in haste and they're not going through the steps and they haven't even applied for another job. So you quit that job. And then you don't apply for another job. And then when you have that gap in employment, you're upset. However, you never went back and applied for another job. So apply for another job once you've done your resume and cover letter to ensure that you don't have a gap in employment. And now this last one is where it gets tricky, but this is to avoid leaving on bad terms. As all these things are, this whole video could have been summed up into avoid leaving on bad terms. However, make sure that you put in notice if you can. Now, you may have to put in notice in you sick time. You may have to put in notice and depending on your industry, that may be, you know, um, usually standard is two weeks for some industries that may be a month. Um, for some industries that may be, you know, a couple days and, you know, certain managers will tell you, if you say, okay, well, I got a new job. It starts in a week and a half. I wanted to put in notice. However, um, you know, I know notice is two weeks, but I only have a week and a half. And there's some managers who will put in, for you a week and a half and give you those couple extra days um you know for sick time or whatever it is when you're honest and upfront with them and that allows you to maintain that relationship in case you ever need a recommendation in the future or if you ever need to go back and speak to that um manager about possibly being reemployed or anything that would require that relationship depending on what fields you go to school in, you may need a work reference and that may be the person who can do it for you. So with that being said, you know, continue on your search, continue to respect yourself and find those things um, in places that are going to make you happy and work for you on your journey. And as always, thank you guys and I'll see you all in the next video.